Kazakhstanan Salem, welcome to inform you. On 14th of January, the first Grand Slam tournament of the year, the Australian Open started in Melbourne. Matches featuring the best tennis players take place on the main card, which is named after Australian Rod Laver, the only person to win all four Grand Slam tournaments twice in one season. No less great Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal, and Roger Federer could not do this even once. Lever also became the first millionaire tennis player in history. Now 85 years old, Rod still appears every year in the stands of the arena named after him in Melbourne. When Rod Laver went for the Australian Open title in his most successful year, 1969, he suffered a lot in the semi-finals. Then Rod played the longest match of his career. The meeting lasted almost five hours, an incredible 42 games in the Melbourne afternoon heat. Laver and his rival, fellow Australian Tony Rod saved themselves using the old method, placing a cabbage leaf under their headdress. But that didn't help much either. Level 1 with incredible character, grinding out the win. 7-5, 22-20, 9-11, 1-6, 6-5. Labour was born on August of 9, 1938, on a farm near Australian city of Rockhampton. From early childhood, Labour, who was one of four children in the family, knew very well what tennis was, because his parents were big fans of this game. The father and mother of the future star met an amateur tournament in the small town of Dingo. Rod himself began playing tennis at the age of six with an adult racket whose hand was ground down to the feet of Laver's very small hand. He was never distinguished by outstanding physical characteristics. Red hair, thinness. 49,000 freckles, a hump on the nose and bow legs. It's unlikely that any of these traits would make you single me out as an outstanding athlete. Laver wrote about himself in the book The Education of a Tennis Player. In 1953, at the age of 15, Rod was still very far from being called an outstanding athlete, but it was then that uh, he began the journey in his direction. He dropped out of school with the consent of his parents in order to fully concentrate on playing tennis. Labour ended up in a specialized camp run by Harry Hompen, another uh, famous Australian tennis player whose name was uh, later given an ex to an exhibition team tournament. Hompen had a significant influence on the development of Labour's career, did not uh, hesitate to predict a great future for Rod in local newspapers and also stuck on the nickname Rocket, which remained with the future Grand Slam champion forever. In 1956, when Lever was 17 years old, he made his Grand Slam debut. At his uh, native Australian Open, he advanced to the second round in the other three majors he lost in the first match, but persistent tennis training also brought the first fruits in 1956. The Australian won the US Junior Championship and less than a year after his victory, he was forced to join the army. The servers helped the tennis player get a little stronger physically, but did not in any way affect his love for the game and his determination to become a great athlete. Less than a year after returning from the army in 1959, Laver won his first significant senior title with the Australian national team. He won the Davis Cup. In the final, uh, the Australians defeated the defending champions on their territory. The then very strong US team. In 1960, Rod Laver's first victory at the Grand Slam tournament occurred. He won his home Australian Open, defeating his compatriot Neil Fraser in a 
top five set final and over the in 1961 Lever also won a Wimbledon on the grass cards of London what won the de decisive match against American Chuck McNeely in less than an hour the following year was triumphant for Lever at the age of 24 he won all four Grand Slam tournaments for the first time repeating the achievements of American John Bart, which he established in 1938, but there is one extremely important nuance. It was accepted that until 1968, only tennis players who had matter status could take part in the Grand Slam tournaments. At the same time, their level of play could be very high, like levers, but they did not receive money for participation. Sometimes they were paid very minor bonuses as incentives plus the organizers covered travel expenses. I was 24 years old, single, living without much care, hitting a tennis ball for three, seeing everything I could, drinking a few beers and occasionally allowing myself to have fun. That's all that was on my mind. Lever wrote about himself, but the prospects of making good money, plus the opportunity to compete with the strongest players in the world, outweared some of the frivolity of the young Australian who had won everything he could in a matter of tennis. In 1963, Lever signed a professional contract with promoter Jack Kramer for $100,000 a year. 40 days professional tennis, but this is a ridiculous amount. But then in 1963, it was a profitable financial offer. The first six months as a professional were difficult for the Australian. He lost more often than he won, but by the end of 1963, Road became the second racket in the world, second only to compatriot Ken Roswell. Laver, like other professional players, was able to return to participating in Grand Slam tournaments in 1968. It was uh, then that so-called open air began in tennis, meaning that people began to be allowed into the most important tournaments regardless of status. This moment is considered a returning point in the history of tennis. All modern records have been counted since 1968. Just a year after the start of the open year, 31 year old Lever achieved an achievement that no other tennis player has yet repeated. Even in 1962, he won all four Grand Slam tournaments in a season as an amateur. Then, then in 1969, he did the same. As a professional among the strongest players on the planet, Djokovic nor Nadal nor Federer were able to conquer the Australian Open, Roland Garros, Wimbledon and the US Open in one year. Federer definitely won't do this, since he was completing his brilliant career and Nadal's chances due to injuries also tend to zero. The only real contender for repeating Lever's record is 36-year-old 30, uh, Djokovic, who was already closest to the Australian's record in 2021. Novak had to win only one match to achieve this, the US Open final against Russian Daniil Medvedev. But the Serb conceded, bursting into tears a few games before the defeat right during the change of sides. The Australian himself, after his record stood, published a rather ironic post. Novak, brace yourself, the guest continues. Best wishes labor the Australian Road. Returning to the triumphant year 1969 for Lever, it is worth mentioning that that year was as successful in terms of tennis as it was difficult in his personal life. Rod and his wife Mary Benson, who had been married for three years at that time, were expecting their first child, and Lever was away from home practically all year due to constant flights and participation in tournaments. The athlete that describe the situation in some detail in the book Education of a Tennis Player. I had 
almost completed the most important year of my tennis life when the pressure that almost every man experiences suddenly fell upon me. Home pressure. I had an unhappy, angry wife who wanted me to be at home and not somewhere 3,000 miles away. She stopped talking to me. Despite everything, in 1971, the Australian became the first tennis player in history to earn more than a million dollars in prize money during his career. For the sport of those times, it was a lot of money, but it does not stand up to any comparison with more modern times, the current first racket of the world. Novak Djokovic has earned $180 million during his career, which is not yet over. Lever's professional career ended in 1979. In total, he won 184 singles tournaments, 11 of which were Grand Slam titles. In doubles, the Australian has 27 titles, 6 of them in majors. In an interview with the New York Times after his retirement, Lever was asked if he knew how many major tournaments he had won, to which the Australian responded with a laugh. No, I don't understand these things. In addition to his in Nature Arena, an exhibition tournament also named after Lever, membership in the Tennis Hall of Fame, and a record for winning Grand Slam tournaments in a season, the Australian left a legacy in the form of something else that everyone who has enjoyed at least a few I once picked up a tennis racket. Rod was the first to use a stroke called top spin with an upward spin of the ball. Modern tennis would look completely different without this technique. Stay safe, stay tuned. Okay.